I'm not very intimidating in person. I think the things that have been written about me are more sort of formidable than the actual item is. Coming up on this edition of Movie Star, a look at one of the industry's finest actresses, Academy Award winner Meryl Streep. People are contradictory. People are full of flaws. People are surprising. Meryl Streep, a 16-time Academy Award nominee who's a master in accents, makes an impact on screen and off. She has so many moves, so many little things she does that are really subtle and beautiful. She's great. And she's just so warm and so funny and so generous. What is talent? It's just she has a flair for making a made-up situation real, you know, and inventively, freely, makes it true, you know. She's great. Meryl Streep is a two-time Oscar winner. According to Wade Major, senior film critic for Box Office Magazine, Meryl perfected the ability to morph into a role. What's amazing about Meryl Streep is that she's able to completely shed who she is and completely take on whatever role or performance it is that she's, she's required to take on. Uh, most actors, if you look at them in any given performance, you'll see a little bit of their mannerisms, who they are. If you know who they are as a person, you'll see that in their performance. Meryl Streep somehow is able to just let who she is go and completely take on the, the role, and that's, that's a rare talent. She was born Mary Louise Streep on June 22, 1949, in Summit, New Jersey. Meryl studied to be an opera singer. She graduated cum laude from Vassar and received a Master of Fine Arts degree from Yale. Her first professional acting jobs were on stage. Her 1977 big screen debut was opposite Jane Fonda in a true story about playwright Lillian Hellman, Julia. In 1978, Street married sculptor Don Gummer and then earned her first Oscar nomination for The Deer Hunter. In 1979, the year her son was born, Merrill had three movie releases, including Woody Allen's Manhattan, the political drama The Seduction of Joe Tynan, and the divorce drama Kramer vs. Kramer. Streep won her first Oscar for Kramer vs. Kramer. You're supposed to feel sorry for the mother in those situations. The woman is always the easy one to feel for. And uh, the film was constructed to make you not feel so much for her. But rather than go either way, she brought this, this storm of conflicted emotions to the part that I don't think anybody really believed was in the material to begin with. Two years after her first Academy Award, Streep received another Oscar nomination for the romance The French Lieutenant's Woman. Her next release, the mystery thriller Still of the Night, tries to duplicate the look of an Alfred Hitchcock film, but Merrill wasn't used to her full potential. Still of the Night, that was something that was a noir film that my whole character was about my hair and how it caught the light from the Venetian blind, and I found it incredibly boring, and so boring is, is um, hard. Another 1982 release, Sophie's Choice, proved to be more challenging. Merrill mastered a Polish accent and how to speak German. Street plays a Nazi concentration camp survivor in Sophie's Choice, which was another Oscar-winning role for her. That was when everybody first suddenly realized just what a chameleon she could be. They knew she was a good actress, but with Sophie's Choice, it was sudden, they suddenly became aware of the fact that she could do anything. Uh, the accent, everything about that performance was so completely contrary to everything that she had done before that, you know, how do you, how do you not give her an Oscar for that? Sophie's Choice co-stars Kevin Kline. The following year, Streep and her husband had a baby girl, and she impressed audiences with an Oscar-nominated performance in Silkwood as a nuclear plant employee who dies under mysterious circumstances. Streep was now a household name. She was playing opposite famous actors, including Robert De Niro in Falling in Love and Sam Neill in Plenty. Robert Redford worked with her on Out of Africa, which earned another Oscar nomination. Next, Jack Nicholson co-starred with her in Heartburn. Streep's daughter plays her child in the movie. Then, in real life, Meryl gave birth to another baby girl. Her next Oscar-nominated performance, opposite Jack Nicholson, was as a homeless person in Ironweed. For her to do what she did in Ironweed with Jack Nicholson was, to my mind, probably one of the most daring things ever. Uh, she's a homeless woman. She's a woman who's down and out. It's one of the most 
dressed down, rugged, raw performances of her career, and yet she turned that performance in at a time when, by rights, she should have been going for more glamorous. Streep was also far from glamorous in her next Oscar-nominated role, A Cry in the Dark. She portrays a real-life Australian woman charged with the murder of her baby. Meryl's baby daughter accompanied her on the set. When I was in Australia shooting um, Evil Angels, I think they called it there, uh, Cry in the Dark, I was so fascinated by the Aboriginal mothers it, when we were shooting in Alice Springs, the families that were uh, in our film. And the little bitty kids never moved away from the mother. My, I had a three-year-old with me, and she, every time I let go of her hand, she would take off into the bush and just get, you know, there's everything spiky and spiny, and I thought she was, you know, it drove me insane. Streep's memorable line in Cry in the Dark, a dingo took my baby, became the movie's catchphrase. After working in Australia, Streep, the mother, decided to stay close to home for her children's sake. And following so many dramas, she wanted to make a comedy. Her 1989 comedy, She Devil, filmed near her home in New York. Now 40 years old, Meryl plays the other woman, a romance novelist. Then she did her own singing for the comedy, Postcards from the Edge, written by Carrie Fisher. Meryl portrays a second generation actress who's forced to live with her mother. It's about making her way back to real life without drugs and out from under the shadow of her mother. To me, it was interesting too because I'm a famous person and it's about being the daughter of a famous person. So I have a sort of <laughs> unnatural in interest in this subject. Meryl enjoyed filming postcards from the edge in Los Angeles. Now I realize why people made movies here for years and years and years, because it's really lovely to make films here. It's easier. I mean, the weather's good all the time, and you can go home at night. Not true in, um, you know, the Serengeti plane. Meryl earned another Academy Award nomination for Postcards from the Edge. One year later, she and her husband had another baby girl. On screen, she returned to comedy, playing the woman Albert Brooks meets in the afterlife in Defending Your Life. Then Streep continued in the comedy genre with Death Becomes Her, co-starring Bruce Willis and Goldie Hawn. It's about two female rivals who take an immortality potion. Death Becomes Her won a visual effects Oscar. Next, she was on the road and in a drama again, traveling to Denmark and Portugal for The House of the Spirits. Glenn Close co-stars. Then, Streep tried something completely different, becoming an action star in the adventure The River Wild. In order to play a river rafting guide, she learned how to navigate class four rapids. Just physically, it was very, uh, I needed a lot of stamina and um, and a kind of courage that I haven't had to call up before. I mean, not not just emotional courage, although this is sort of ended up being a very emotional movie, but um, physically the, the challenge was to be able to read the water and, and um, understand how to move through it safely. Streep had to act while rafting through whitewater. She plays a river guide taken hostage by armed robbers. Nobody ever really expects great actors to become action stars or necessarily vice versa. Those are, those are two different camps. So for Meryl to actually become physical, to say, I think I can do you know, what action stars do, I can do what, uh, what the boys do, that was extraordinary. No one ever expected that from her. After buffing up for the River Wild, Meryl gained weight to play a middle-aged housewife in The Bridges of Madison County. The romance, directed by and co-starring Clint Eastwood, is based on a best-selling novel. The Bridges of Madison County performed well at the box office, and Meryl was nominated for another Academy Award. Her next drama, Before and After, is about a son who's accused of murder. Another drama, Marvin's Room, focuses on a family that reunites after the sisters diagnosed with leukemia. Diane Keaton and Robert De Niro co-star. Her next release, Dancing at Luganza, is based on a Tony Award-winning Broadway play. Meryl portrays one of five unmarried sisters in rural Ireland. Next, she played a mother dying of cancer in One True Thing. Renee Zellweger is the daughter. It's about something every human being should know, which is, you know, wake up, smell the flowers, be here now, be in your life, and appreciate what you have. It's a nice rem reminder to not take for granted the people who love you and the contribution that they make in your life. 
Renee Zellweger attended the ceremony as Meryl received a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. We proudly welcome to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Miss Meryl Streep. When I first came to Hollywood, I was 19, and I was somebody's date uh, for spring vacation who lived here. And we walked along this exact route. And I walked over all sorts of people. But I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd be walking over me at some point. You know, I have my star on the Walk of Fame today. And that little ceremony is like a, a small town ceremony. It's really sweet. Oscar winner Meryl Streep cemented herself in movie history. Now 50 years old, she moved to character roles. She plays a music teacher fighting the Board of Education to teach underprivileged kids in her 1999 release, Music of the Heart. Now I teach 150 kids at three East Harlem schools. Streep learned to play the violin for Music of the Heart, and she earned another Oscar nomination. Next, she voiced a character in the futuristic sci-fi Pinocchio story, Artificial Intelligence AI. She plays Blue Mecca, the drama's version of the Blue Fairy. Also in 2001, Meryl and her family moved to New York. The following year, she had two December releases, Adaptation and The Hours. Adaptation was just a joy from beginning to end. Uh, I shot both of the films back to back, and The Hours was very difficult. But this one, I landed in Southern California and sort of didn't stop smiling from the minute we started shooting. Street plays an author whose book is adapted as a screenplay and adaptation. Her portrayal earned an Oscar nomination and a Golden Globe win. It's very unexpected, and so I'm completely, the rug's been pulled out from under me. You look very glamorous right now. Thank you. What, uh... <laughs> Don't get near me, I smell like a camel. Nervous and happy, Streep talked about her other 2002 release, The Hours focusing on three women. It's actually amazingly fluid, a fluid movie. But the emotions that are swept along in that current are really deep. And um, so I just had to keep myself all tightly coiled all the time, which was rough. The Hours was a Best Picture Oscar nominee. In 2003, Meryl and her husband, Don Gummer, celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary. She also won another Golden Globe Award for her work on the television miniseries about the AIDS crisis, Angels in America. I'm really, really proud of this piece, maybe more than anything I've done. Angels in America was the most watched cable show of 2003. Street followed with a remake of The Manchurian Candidate, directed by Jonathan Demme. She plays the mother of a vice presidential candidate in the political thriller. I felt so confident in this piece of material. It's a thrilling bit of writing, and it's in the hands of a master director. Meryl has done a very good job of transforming herself into a character actress. It's almost like it's liberated her. She's found the out from that curse of not being able to continue a career as you get older. And she's doing colorful roles, supporting roles, uh, that uh, she probably never would have been allowed to do when she was younger. Another character role in the family film Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events was fun because of co-star Jim Carrey. Felice just got my husband too. Get out of town. Oh, really? He does most of the work for you, you know. He's so funny and um, the problem working with him is not laughing during the movie, you know. You just gotta hold your breath and get through the scene. It's a little nerve-wracking as an actor, you know, you just want to make sure she likes you or something. I, I don't know, there's just some part of you that wants to be accepted. Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events was a box office success, earning more than $118 million in the U.S. Streep returned to comedy for her next release. In Prime, she's a psychoanalyst whose son falls in love with her patient, Brian Greenberg and Uma Thurman co-star. Watching her work when I was younger inspired me to be an actress. And to sit down opposite her and, and be in, a, in the same scene with her could be, you know, very daunting, just from that admiration level. But um, in the end, she's just a sort of wonderful and beautiful person. She's very funny. She's very quirky in real life. And I think this lets the, a little bit of that out. I know it's hard for you to understand, but this isn't personal. <laughs> I just didn't want my son to be giving up on his faith so early. When I read the script, I did not know what was coming. And I thought, well, this is an interesting story about a shrink who's really trying to help this young woman. <laughs> and she has problems with her son. I can relate, you know. 
<laughs> and then it all kind of explodes. It was very funny. Street relied on her own motherly instincts for pride. It's hard to, you know, let go of those desires to mother and to correct and to help. And, and I don't think it matters if you're a shrink or a professor or, a, you know, the president of the United States. Probably it's hard no matter when this moment happens in a parent's life when the child goes off. Prime was Streep's only release in 2005. Then the actress, who rarely made more than one film a year, had three releases in 2006. She sang for her role in A Prairie Home Companion and plays a tough New York fashion magazine editor in The Devil Wears Prada. To me, it's the story of a woman in corporate, uh, at the head of the corporate ladder who's misunderstood, whose motives and the pressures on her <laughs> are um, intense and who doesn't have time to play certain nice games that she plays other games that make good business sense. The Devil Wears Prada co-star Anne Hathaway plays Streep's assistant in the film. It's a coincidence that in real life both Streep and Hathaway attended Vassar. I was kind of speechless when I first met her, so uh, she's like, so you went to Vassar? I was like, yeah. So it, uh, it, it gave us a little bit of conversation. Because there's tension between Streep's and Hathaway's characters, Meryl stayed aloof on set. She was really focused in her character, so she wasn't really herself on the set. And I mean, Meryl, as a woman, is so warm and gregarious and maternal and lovely, just lovely. And on set, she was just, she, she tried to, she isolated herself. She stayed very quiet. And, uh, but we understood why. She warned me about it before the movie started that she might do that. Streep earned $5 million for The Devil Wears Prada. The movie surpassed expectations and made $39 million its opening weekend, despite stiff summer competition. And Merrill was nominated for another Oscar. Streep's third release of 2006, Ant Bully, is an animated feature in which she plays the Queen Ant. Then Merrill worked with her daughter, Mamie Gummer, on the drama Eve. That same year, Streep appeared in the thriller Rendition with Reese Witherspoon and Jake Gyllenhaal. She also co-starred with Tom Cruise in the war drama Lions for Lambs, directed by Robert Redford. It is a film about making the right choices, but it's also a film about how easy it is not to make a choice at all. Just to go to a dinner party and bark about what you think politically, this, 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 this buddy, this is this person's fault, this person's fault, and not do anything about it yourself. Lions for Lambs is about incompetent leaders sending soldiers into battle. Whenever I get into a political type film, you, you end with a question rather than an answer. I, I don't think it's us to give answers. It's too pedantic. And also, I don't think America responds to that. I don't think they like to be told what they have to do, particularly by the entertainment industry. But to be able to provoke thought, that's another matter, and do it dramatically and entertain them, that's another matter. And that's sort of my objective. What attracted me to it was that it was a piece of film that didn't tell me how to think it invited me to participate. Streep's big screen characters in 2008 were complete opposites. She's a mom whose daughter tries to find her real father in the romantic musical comedy Mamma Mia. And she plays a nun who suspects a priest of child abuse in the drama Doubt. Her Doubt costume helped Meryl understand the character. Putting on the habit in the morning, layer upon layer, it just sort of gets you back into the world and, and it was sort of, it did the work of preparation for me. Just the act of, of dressing. Amy Adams co-stars in Doubt as a young nun. Sister James has nobody else to talk to. She is um, completely isolated. You're not allowed to leave you're the convent. Um, you're not allowed to speak to a priest outside of, um, outside of confession. So the scene in the garden with Father Flynn is completely forbidden. Meryl's performance in Doubt led to an Oscar nomination. She followed with another Academy Award nominated performance as TV chef Julia Child in Julie and Julia. So charming. <laughs> she was so authentically herself, no apologies. And she had a great love of life and a great spirit and um, sort of joie de vivre that was infectious. Julie and Julia intertwines the life story of Julia Child with Julie Powell, an internet blogger who cooks all the recipes from Child's first book. Meryl's dad co-star, Amy Adams, worked with her on this film. It was 
what's so great about this film is it sort of it looks at two developed relationships that um, you have marriages and and these wonderfully supportive men. During the Julie and Julia premiere, Adams talked about working with Street. Meryl is to Amy what Julia Child is to Julie Powell. Um, she's this great influence and this presence that's there even when she isn't. She cleared the path for others to take and, and um, if we're lucky enough to walk down that road, I, I consider myself very lucky. Because Julie and Julia is about cooking, the star's own culinary expertise was questioned. I'm really good at sort of making a meal out of whatever's there, so, so a lot of sort of goulash type things, you know, a lot of casserole type things. I'm not such a good cook, but I got better on this movie. Everybody's happier at home. Meryl said she gained 15 pounds playing Julia Child. She followed her Oscar-nominated performance in Julia and Julia by voicing a character in Fantastic Mr. Fox. You really are a kind of a quote-unquote fantastic fox. Next, Streep co-starred with Steve Martin and Alec Baldwin in the romantic comedy It's Complicated. Now in her 60s, Meryl often makes two to four movies a year. Meryl Streep's success made her an industry legend. Now the popular actress begins the next stage of her career. She had all of these opportunities available to her in the 80s as a leading lady. Now that she's moving into character roles and supporting roles, uh, I, I don't think there's any limit to what she's going to be able to do. Oh my god, it does uh, thrilling. Thank you for watching this Meryl Streep edition of Movie Star. Join us next time for another inside look at your favorite stars of the big screen.